Show. Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney, and you have found a place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. So give us a call. Why don't you? 616-774-2424. That's 616-774-2424. We'll get your question, comment, or concern uh, on the air That because that's what we do, right? That is what we do every week here. Now, I don't know if you've been following the news, um, but but uh, in the last week or so, we've had some. Well, if you've been following the news, this is not really too surprising. OK, it's more uh, more. Uh, hmm. You know, if you were on the Titanic, right, and the thing went crunch, crunch, crunch on the iceberg, right? And uh, then there weren't enough lifeboats and, uh, you know, all that, that that whole thing kind of played out there. Right. Would you say that it was a big surprise when the bow went under, you know, the front of the boat went under, you know, it'd be like, oh, look, at look at that. What, wow. What a surprise. No, but still it would be momentous. Right. It would be a, it would be noticeable. You'd say, hmm. Looky there. I mean, I'm not surprised by that because I was kind of expecting that to happen, given everything else that's happened. I'm not surprised that uh, that the bow is now slipping beneath the waves and, you know, people bouncing off the propellers and what have you. This doesn't surprise me. Uh, but still in all, it's, a, it's an event. It's a thing. It's a happening. And uh, there it is. Well... <clears throat> Hard to say for sure, uh, but, you know, doesn't it look like the bow is slipping under the waves? Here's what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm talking about. There is a bank in California and Massachusetts, mostly California, Massachusetts. There's another one that's mostly in New York. And they made some bad decisions regarding how they ran their bank. Bad decisions. Now, these are the people who tell you, who spend their day telling you how virtuous they are, how good they are, how concerned about other people they are, you see? But they're millionaires and gillionaires and jillionaires and high tech, what have you, right? These are the people who got your kids away from reading and into TikTok and what have you, all right? These are, this is what these people do for a living. Right, they get you uh, uh, addicted to the uh, interwebs there, and um, that's what they do. Okay, and they are the people who stay in California and ran that thing into the toilet. Tried flushing it a couple of times, but uh, you know, with these low flush toilets, didn't go all the way down, and so California is still hanging on there. <laughs> how? Because you're paying for it. That's how. Big surprise. All right. Anyway, they made some bad bets. They made some bad decisions regarding investment strategy, et cetera, et cetera. Now, because back in the Great Depression, which none of us remember, or I don't think we've got anyone in living memory who's still living memory of what the Great Depression was. You may have been a kid. You know, you may have been born in the 20s. So you may have some recollection of it. So hardly, but let's face it, you and I, it's it's stories that our parents told us about the about the uh, no jobs and bread lines and stuff like that. And how wonderful FDR was to save us from it all. Anyway, point being, they had this stuff. They came out with federal deposit insurance. And the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, was formed so that regular folks like you could have up to quarter million dollars in a given bank and not worry about it. Okay? Because the federal government, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, would be there right, to throw money at it. Well, well, these folks put their money in the bank and they don't have a quarter million dollars. They have hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Lots and lots of money. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it's a fairly small bank, but among the people who are much better than you, much more, much more concerned, much more mm, intelligent, much more forward-thinking, much more 
likely to go to Drag Queen Story Hour. Much more likely to, um, you know, be super smart and all the rest of the stuff, right? M much more likely to be virtuous than you, okay? You know what I'm talking about? These, you know, the professional virtue people, you know, who are saving everything and blah, blah, but can't get up to go to church on Sunday. Those people. Well, they keep their money in this bank. Hundreds of millions of dollars in this bank. And the bank fails because the bank made bad decisions about where interest rates were going and risk and blah, 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 blah. Typical banking type stuff. Typical banking type stuff. Are you with me on this? This was not like, oh, the federal government did something. Oh, the Chinese did something. Oh, Russia did something. Oh, COVID. No, 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 no. None of that. This was typical banking decisions, and they did it poorly. Now, you may say that it may have something to do with the fact that they did not have a corporate officer to manage risk. Okay? See, banks have these people who what they're there for is to figure out, are we doing anything risky here? How are we doing on this? Hmm? Now, I do not sit on the board of that bank. There's a shocker for you, huh? Big surprise. But what I have read, and who knows, of course, but what I have read is that they didn't have their corporate risk officer in the United States. Their international corporate risk officer doubled as their virtue signaling person who was in charge of, um, you know, being fair to everybody and making sure that, you know, and then that was a lot more fun, right? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Their DEI officer, this is what I've read, the DEI officer, right? So they're, they're concerned with making the world fair. The, so the bank is not there to make money. The bank is not there to manage risk. The bank is not there to keep the depositors' money safe. No, the bank is there to prove to the whole world just how virtuous they are as compared to <laughs> as compared to you <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making this stuff up i'm not kidding right so what does joe biden say our president chief magistrate in the united states what does he say when this crisis first breaks he says well you know that's the breaks right hey we'll cover the small insurers that's what fdic is there for but you guys made bad decisions. Like, oh my God, he's making sense. What the, what? What in the world? You know, you you put money in a bank and you take risk. What do you know? Hey, hey, these are all so-called entrepreneurs, right? They don't want their money guaranteed by the government. Oh no, they get millions and jillions of dollars because they take the risks. That's why entrepreneurs you know, if, if you have any reason to say, well, Bill Gates, blah, 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 blah. Well, they took risks, okay? They didn't go to work for somebody else. They took risks, right? They bet it all. And a lot of people do that, you know? A lot of people that you work for or worked for, they bet it all. And you say, well, look at that, you got all that stuff. Yeah, but that's because he bet it all, put it all on the table and worked really hard and made it happen. These jokers don't want to do that. See, this is what this is. This totally flips my mind, right? They don't want to do that. They don't want to take the risk. So within a couple of days, I think I'm like within 24 hours, he's singing out of the other side of his mouth like he's done in practically every issue that you can point to. Practically every issue. You know, you can find certain people taking radically different positions within short periods of time, and this is just one of them. You know, it still is a little bit shocking that it was that quick, but there it is. And what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is, like, within 24 hours, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, you invested in the bank and you ran the risk and blah, blah, right? It went from that to, oh, no, we're going to guarantee everything. What? You know what this is like? You decide not to insure your house. Oh, you, you get very little crappy uh, house insurance. OK, here's what here's here's what's going on. And you build a house and you have crappy insurance, right? Or it's uninsured. And most of this, 98 percent, some huge number was totally uninsured. And then 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 you go borrow your neighbor's credit card 
and rebuild your house on the neighbor's credit card. That's what's going on with this bank, okay? And, of course, the well-connected people in the other bank that failed, right? Now we have the second and third largest bank failures in the history of the United States, right? And they're borrowing the neighbor's credit card. Who's the neighbor? Who do you think is the neighbor whose credit card they're borrowing after they bet their own money, right? And now they want somebody to make it good? Yours. It's your credit card. Get it? You've been listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Hello, and welcome back to The David Carrier Who finds the money? You find the money. Heaven sent. Yeah, money's heaven sent. You betcha it is. Heaven called Washington, D.C. Are you kidding me? You know, if you ever watched the, the, the Titanic movie, you know, you wonder who goes toing off the propeller. That's you, brother, sister. That's you. And uh, they've got your credit card in the lifeboat. I'm mixing my metaphors. I guess that doesn't really work. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? See, see, you don't realize. It, you got to realize what we're dealing with here. Okay. This is a different world, right? This is a world where the government is picking winners and losers, right? Do you think, here's, here's a question for you. So you got a bank in Silicon Valley that made stupid, bad decisions, risked its investors' money, right? Risked its investors' money and lost. And now they're coming to you and they're saying, uh, 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 yeah, we rolled the dice and we lost. Now, if we won, we would keep the money, right? We would keep the winnings, but we lost. And now we want you to pay for our losses. You know anyone who goes to the casino too often? You know anybody like that? And when they imagine this, imagine that that friend of yours who goes to the casino too often, right? Doesn't want to hear about them going to the casino. Doesn't want you. Oh, you morale. You're so moralistic. Oh, you're terrible. You're so judgmental. You ever hear this one? You're judgmental. <laughs> you're awful because you're judging me. You're judging me. Don't judge me. I go to the casino. It's my money. If I lose it, I lose it, All right? Well, the situation we've got going on right now is, you know, you don't get to judge them, right? Because it's my own money. And if I win, I win big. I win big. But if I lose, you pay. What? I, this is it. This is the deal that they are giving because... Because why? Well, because their buddies are the ones. Who do you think runs their campaigns? Who do you think pays for their campaign? Right? This is the payoff. If, you know, do you, ever, do you ever watch The Sting? You know, you ever watch a con job? Here's the con job. Here's how it works. Right? And it's your wallet they're picking. It's your money. How do you know? How do you know? Look at it. That's all you got to do. Just look at it. Look at what's going on. Now, it's one thing to say, yeah, yeah, but you know, that's, you know, that's those people who call themselves socialists. You know what I mean? The people in Congress who call themselves socialists, like Barney Frank, like Bernie Sanders, these people, right? They're invested in these banks. Socialism means never having to say you're sorry. Socialism means, you know, uh, if I make good decisions, I keep the money. This is why, you know, Bernie Sanders, is a no, he's a socialist, right? He's all in favor of everybody having everything. What's he got, five mansions? Uh, how about Biden? How many mansions does he have? <laughs> how about Barney Frank, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's mind-numbing. It's, it's stunning, which I think is why people are stunned by it. Now, 
that's them. That's politicians. You say, well, politicians have been politicians and they've always been politicians. And, you know, and that's that's just the way it goes. I say, well, OK, you know, I've never seen it to this degree. You know, we, we've never we've never seen it this blatant, this obvious. But ask yourself if the bank that went bust was funding. Oh, I don't know. Second Amendment rights. <laughs> Let's say so again, this was a super special bank for these high tech people, right? What if there was a super special bank for um, people who made firearms, you know, hunting rifles and, you know, all the kind of stuff that you buy during the season, right? Or even fishing lures and stuff like that. But let's say, let's say there was a bank that was dedicated, right, to um, making fishing lures <laughs> or a hot rod party. That's better. That's better. Okay. Okay. So we get a bank <laughs> instead of doing all this high tech stuff. It it it's for uh, gun manufacturers, uh, hunting clothing. All they'll finance or what they finance is instead of Silicon Valley, it's. Uh, it's testosterone valley. Sorry, ladies. Testo what could, it's not fair to say that, but anyway. And and they they they're like, okay, if you want to make hot rod parts, if you want to make car parts like Napa or whatever, you know, regular car parts, regular stuff. It doesn't have to be extreme. Um, but if you want to make uh gunsmithing parts and all the rest of it, wear your bank. So instead of Silicon Valley Bank, it's gonna be uh gun part valley bank. Or something like that. I don't know. Gunpowder Valley Bank, whatever. What if, okay? Now that bank makes some bad decisions, let's say. Do you think for a millisecond, do you, th and it's going to threaten all kinds of jobs, right? All kinds of jobs you know, for people working, putting together uh, fishing lures and sewing camo and what have you, okay? <laughs> Camping equipment even, let's just say. And it's done in America. Yeah, I know that's kind of a stretch. But anyway, so so let's say it's that. Do you think for a millisecond that anybody would be rushing to save them? Or would you be hearing lectures about, oh, they made a bad decision. Shame on them. They made a bad decision. Okay? Do you think that you would hear anybody rushing to the rescue of the people who supplied things that you liked, that you wanted? The answer to ask the question is to answer it. Of course not. Of course not. So how does it get to be fair that you're subsidizing, you, you are subsidizing, and it's your kids and your grandkids because you're the one having kids and grandkids. Why is it fair that you and the, you know, and your family are subsidizing the lifestyle of the rich and famous out in California and the Silicon Valley and in Massachusetts? How, how did that get to be a good thing? How did it be a fair thing? You know, especially when you know to a moral certainty, you know that if the shoe were on the other foot, they would be scraping you off so quick. Oh, my God. It wouldn't be funny. It would not be funny. Look at all the rioting charges after a certain election that occurred in 2016. They burn stuff. They smash stuff. You know, you want to look at an insurrection? Look at the riots, burned up cop cars, everything else. What happened to those people? Charges dismissed. Flash forward to 2021, I guess, right? right? Then what happened? Oh, my God, solitary confinement. Lock them away for years and years and years. If you don't think that stuff matters, it matters. Maybe you should wake up and smell the coffee. That's my suggestion. And when it comes to economics, this has a direct impact on you, which we'll get to in the, in the next segment. Because I'm not, this is all, I'm this yeah, I'm ranting somewhat. I get that. But this is not just a rant. This is this is at home stuff for you. OK, this matters. And this is not stuff that's happening somewhere far away. That you just ignore. Please don't ignore it. Please. You're listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier. Your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. We are. Uh. You know, you know, why do you tune into the show anyway? Why do why do people do that? And that's no excuse to tune out. <laughs> well, partially because you can call 616-774-2424. That's area code 
seven seven four twenty four uh twenty four because we are live and local and listen if you want to hear more about uh your specific issues an yeah. issue about wills trusts or probate if you're wondering how do i beat the high cost of long-term care what's that medicaid stuff about um if it's real estate law if it's business law you know if you hear oh i hear all these tax refunds how's that working for people how's that actually does that mean anything to me does that have any impact on my life probably yes um, if you run a business anyway, um, you know, things like that, that you want to know about, well, give me a call 616-774-2424. It's area code 616-774-2424. We can get, we can get in the weeds. We can get down and dirty. I have zero problem with that. Rubber hits the road, you know, and all that. Um, <laughs> what's the difference between a dead skunk in the middle of the road and a dead lawyer in the middle of the road? The answer is. There are skid marks in front of the skunk. So that's where the rubber hits the road. You get it? Anyway, that's my one of my lawyer jokes. So here's the here's the thing. What we're talking about today is the failure of through through regular, normal type, stupid business decision. And you can argue why they did this. Was the banks uh I'm talking about Silicon Valley Bank. And don't take my word for this. For crying out loud, it's so easy to do the research these days. I mean, one of those things those jokers in Silicon Valley came up with is this thing called Google. You may have heard of it. And uh, you can Google this stuff, you know. And, and, you know, I'm not interested in calling back. Oh, you said it was 24 hours. It's actually 36 hours. Okay, okay. I got that part wrong. But, <laughs> which I don't think I did. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, you check this stuff out for yourself. They, they thought interest rates were going to stay low. Interest rates didn't stay low. What happened? They got caught in an interest rate trap. According to uh, reported articles, you know, reported to uh, reported stories, uh, part of the problem was they didn't have a risk officer. Like banks are supposed to, wouldn't you think this would be like kind of normal? You know, like almost having an iceberg lookout on a on a ship? Maybe, huh? Hey, you know, there might be icebergs out there. Maybe we should, eh, nah, nah, icebergs. Pfft. Think of the past, eh? Icebergs don't happen anymore, uh, but we have this we have this job listing. We don't have a job posting here for iceberg lookout. Nah, you don't need. Yeah, we don't have. Man, we don't need one. Hey, you know what we really do need though is somebody to make sure everybody's being fair to one another. What does fair mean? Ah, who the hell knows? But but let's pay them a lot of money, and uh, we'll be able to point to this person and say, "See, we're being fair," and that's much more important than looking out for icebergs or managing bank risk. Roop, that's the land we're living in. OK. Unfortunately, it turns out that they were correct because they had this overwhelming commitment to virtue and stuff. Right. The chattering people, the chattering classes in Washington, D.C. said, hey, you know, these are people just like us. They like to talk. They like to pose. They like to posture. They like to tell everybody else how good they are. Oh, I recognize these people. These are our kind of people. And. They made stupid money decisions. Ma, these are more of our kind of people. How can we tell? Because they were dumb with their money. Hmm. They need money. Let's give them some. Uh, should we take our money? Oh, no, we're not going to do that. I know. There's this. There's these people over there called the middle class, right? Now, we, we've, we've raided their piggy bank to the tune of trillions, 30, what is it, $30 trillion, $32 trillion, whatever it is. Eh, they're good for it. Yeah, they haven't they haven't collapsed yet. I I'm sure we can I'm sure we can heat up their credit cards more. And that's exactly what they did. All right. Now if they weren't friendly with these people, if these weren't the same people interlocking, talk about interlocking um boards of directors and stuff like that, right? If these weren't the same people, all right who is all kinds of incestuous relationships. And I don't mean sexually incestuous, although sometimes, you know, they're married and stuff, nepotism and all the rest. I mean, it's the the worst, it's the worst, most insidious kind of corruption uh, that you can imagine is what's going on here. You know, and again, don't believe me. Please don't believe me. Look it up for yourself. It's reported out there. Not, you have to dig a little bit, but it's there. You can find it. You know? You know? So anyway, Here's how this relates to you. Over and over again, right? 
we see middle class families going broke, not because of loss of income, because you got Social Security for that. Well, what do you mean you got Social Security? Oh, that's the government giving you money. It's the same as bailing out these banks. No, it ain't. <laughs> no, it isn't. Because guess what? You paid in. It's your tax dollars at work. You actually paid for this stuff. They didn't pay. They're expecting you to pay. Let's be very clear about it. And it's the same way with Medicare. You paid, right? You paid in. That's why you have Medicare. Because why? Because you paid for it. What did they pay for? They paid for FDIC. That's what they paid for. Depositors paid for, right? which covers like 2%, 3%, something like that. 97% of these things that they're asking the government for, free money, 97% of it was uninsured, right? You ever you ever, you ever, ever uh, make an insurance claim on your homeowner's insurance and say, oh, that was depreciated. The hell does that mean? Depreciated. Oh, we'll pay you the depreciated value. What does that mean? It means that you don't get it brand new, Right. If it was twelve thousand dollars, you got twelve thousand dollars of fire damage, right? Oh, but your house is this old and blah 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 blah. Okay, here's nine thousand. And you're like, wait a second, I, I but 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 it was nine thousand. I paid me the insurance. Yeah, yeah, but the insurance just covers the depreciated value. We you know, you didn't buy new. We're not replacing new, we're replacing what you had, and uh, you gotta make up the difference. Same way with your car insurance. You ever try this? You ever, ever make a claim on your insurance? Of course not. You're a careful driver. You don't burn down your house. Well, don't wait until you do. All right? But if you're connected, then it doesn't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because they're connected. And they're going to borrow your credit card. And in fact, they didn't even carry insurance on this stuff. It's not like you're going to pay the difference. You're going to pay all of it. Okay. And what frustrates the hell out of me, and it does frustrate the hell out of me, and it absolutely grinds my keister, is when it comes to long-term care, just like Medicare, just like Social Security, you already paid for it with your tax dollars, but now they're making you go broke. That's what's happening over and over again. You're going broke. And because of the way the system works, there's no reliability to it. You know, <laughs> this is where you say hire us because we're reliable, but because <laughs> we are actually, but 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 I mean the, the the point is we're in a we're in a world where where you got to do something like that. Well, well, how did that get to be fair? How did that get to be right? And then when they when they rub your nose in it, like oh, if we make the millions and billions, we're keeping it, but if we lose because we're idiots, then you're gonna pay. And that's what's going on right now. That's what they've decided to do. If you're wondering what's going on with this bank stuff, right? And you're thinking, uh, oh, uh, hmm, is this good or bad for me? The answer is it's not just bad. It's friggin' terrible. It's awful. It's horrible. It's morally wrong. What you're doing is you're saying, here's my credit card. Go to the casino, right? And if you win, keep your winnings and don't pay me back. But if you lose, still don't pay me back. That's the deal. How did that get to be a righteous thing? How did that get to be okay? But it is, and you just saw it happen. And it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. And so then when I go, I talk to people and they're like, oh, well, you know, is it really okay if we get the long-term care covered because, you know, uh, we saved and we did all this stuff. I know you saved. And that should be rewarded and you shouldn't be treated like a bum, right? You shouldn't be treated like a bum because you paid for it already. That's my thing. You're listening to the David Carrier Show, I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And uh, if you want to give us a call, that's easy to do. Area code 616-774-2424. That's 616 616- Seven seven four, uh, twenty four, twenty four, and that's uh, you know just give us a call if you're listening on uh, WKZO, which uh, I'd love to have you listening there, or WOOD or wherever it is, uh, wherever it is you get the uh, the wonderful insight, <laughs> the wonderful insights and uh, 
felicitous commentary that uh, you know that you tune in for, um, and you have a question, well, now's the time, right? Or you can just email me, David at davidcarrierlaw.com. That's David at davidcarrierlaw.com. You can go to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com. Uh, it has been upgraded, so the should be a lot easier to use, a lot, uh, lot easier to get the uh, the good, good information from the uh, from the website. Uh, just get on over there. You, you know the radio shows on there, all kinds of all kinds of wonderful stuff. Um, and of course, in your Sunday newspaper, uh, you've got our, uh, you know, you've got my uh, my weekly column there. So the Michigan Elder Law Reporter. So lots of information out there. Um, and as I say, don't take my word for it. Do your own. Uh, do your own Googling there. It's not that it's not that hard to do. You know, whenever we put the stuff in the, you can't do it on the radio. It's it's difficult. Um, but with the newspaper stuff, uh, we tend to reprint uh, graphs, graphs, graphs. Well, there's a lot of graft going on there. That's for sure. Grifting and grafting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of grifting. Um, but uh, on the newspaper, it's easy when... Uh, uh, you know, because we just reprint the stuff from the government websites. There's no copyright issue. You already paid for it. So, you know, we put a lot of that in into the newspaper just to show you what we're talking about so you don't have to look it up. But we do have uh, Bill on the line. Hello, Bill. Welcome to the David Carrier Show. Hi. Uh, one quick comment, and then I have an estate question. Sure. Uh, you were talking about uh, SVB. Yeah. Are you aware that... Uh, Gavin Newsom has three wineries, and they all bank with SVB. What? No, no way. Oh, come on. Yeah, oh, you're so cynical. No. Could that possibly be? <laughs> the governor of California? So, yeah. He's also exactly. getting bailed out? Really? He has a personal financial interest in this? Go on. Yeah, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, quick question. Sure, um, please. So, I, uh, my wife's uh, parents passed away and got a, a state, and uh, I was under the impression, in general, inheritance, as long as it's under $10 million, isn't taxed um, because it's inheritance. Um, we're finding out that depending on where the money was, it could be taxed. Yeah, that's right. So it's because maybe 401ks or that type of stuff, if it's yes. not just straight cash. Right. Yeah, so here's so here's what you got going on. The estate tax, which said, hey, if you die with a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to tax it, used to be at 600000 So if you had more than 600000 you paid a federal tax on the excess. Now it's, uh, what is it, like $12 million, $12.5 million, something like that. So most people don't have to worry about that tax. Also, when you inherit stock, real estate, um, appreciated assets, assets that have gone up in value, right? You're treated, the person who gets them, so your wife, she gets your parent, her parents' house, right? Parents paid 10000 for the house. It's worth 100000 now. So there's 90000 of capital gain there, right, that you'd normally have to pay tax on. Well, she doesn't have to pay tax because on that gain, because your wife is treated for federal tax purposes. All right. There's about mouthful there. Treated for federal tax purposes as if she had paid full fair market value on the date of death. OK, or 180 days okay. later, which they call the alternative valuation date. That's also true with stocks. You know, so she bought IBM and the, it appreciated. She's not going to pay tax depending on when she sells it. She's not going to pay tax on the gain. Okay, so that's tax free as well. But when you have a traditional IRA, 401k, 403b, thrift savings plan, you know, 457, all those things where no one has paid income tax yet, then you are going to pay income tax on the money when it comes out of the account. Now, under the SECURE Act, um, and the Secure Act Two, your wife has ten years to take the money out. Um, she has to take at least. This is what the regulations say, although they waived them for this year. Um, so who knows what's going on, really, really? Um, but 
uh, she's supposed to take required minimum distributions from the IRA, 401k, 403b, et cetera. It's supposed to take required minimum distributions for the next 10 years, but has to have it has to be fully distributed by year 10. So what we're advising people is let it run. Take those required minimum distributions. And it has to be an individual thing, of course, but this is the, the big picture. This is the 30,000 view advice. The thing is, if you leave the inherited IRA alone, if you leave it alone and just let it invest it, of course, and just let it grow, well, it's growing, it's compounding tax-free for this 10-year period. And as a consequence of that, and it depends on your tax bracket, right? But as a consequence of it growing tax-free, you wind up with an awful lot more at the end of the year, at the end of the 10 year period than you ever would have had if you took the money out and tried to invest it. And if you take the money out, you're not going to invest it. You're going to spend it. OK, so our advice to folks is let it ride. I mean, put it in a um, there's a mutual fund called I, th I think it's RSD uh, is the is the symbol for it. And I'm not giving investment advice. I'm just talking um, but it's a S and P 500, um, emulator. Okay. Index and it, fund. yeah, yeah. It's an index fund. It's got very low, uh, cost ratio on it and, um, lightly managed. You might say, I think it's fidelity. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's a set and forget kind of thing. Just put all your money in there and don't worry about it, which is not investment advice. I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> so don't blame me. But uh, but you know, it, it tweaks it a little bit. It's got a little, there's a little bit of intelligence to it, right? Not much because you can't you can't outguess the, the market, but um, you know, it doesn't have the stinkers in there, put it that way. So, you know, but if you do that, if you do that for 10 years, you're gonna wind up with a whole hell of a lot more money than if you pull it out all right now, pay the income tax at the high tax bracket because you pulled all the money out, right? So this is what we're advising our clients: yep. let it ride, and use an investment. You need an investment advisor, and you know if they tell you anything other than put it in an S and P five hundred, you know, emulator, um, then they're making money and you're not, right? Right. But that's 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 what your wife, you know, you ought to be think. Put it that way, you ought to be thinking about that. You know, we really ought to be that's thinking. Where uh, a state lawyer, we've got a tax advisor, and we're also uh, interviewing financial planners right now. So. Great, great. Yeah, and, and what you want to do is ask them the expense, you know, try that on them. You know, um, well, if you, you know, what, what would you recommend? And I, I need to know what the expense ratio is on those, because the question is not how much does the fund make, which is what they report. The question is how much do you keep, which is after their expenses. You need to know that stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, the music means I need to get out of here. But thank you, Bill. Great question. All right, thank you. You bet. Take care. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. Uh, not legal advice, not financial advice. <laughs> Content free. It's sort of like sort of like an artificial sweetener. It tastes good, but no calories involved. Uh, I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And you have found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and and business law. So if you give us a call, 616-774-2424. That's area code 616-774-2424. Uh, we'll go ahead and get your question, comment, or concern on the air. Easy to do. Uh, and don't tell me this, oh, what happened to the 800 number? Uh, which we did have an 800 number for quite a long time, but, you know, kind of let's face it, uh, long distance thing of the past. So just give us a call, 616-774-2424. You can always drop me an email. Love to get the emails. Tell me how bad I am, stupid I am. Uh, absolutely uh, thrilled to uh, to learn about my uh, ignorance. And uh, that's easy to do, too. David at davidcarrierlaw.com. See, David at davidcarrierlaw.com. And uh, and that's where you can uh, that's where you can do that. Um, we're going to sum up the first hour, and I promise I'll do it very shortly. So a uh, bank that was politically well-connected, apparently even the governor had a whole bunch of money in this bank. Governor of California had a whole bunch of money in the bank. Thank you, Bill, from Kalamazoo, who 
supplied that uh, tidbit, um, made some bad business decisions. Now, if you invest in a company that makes bad business decisions, you lose your money. This is what happens. And it's the way that if you invest your money in a company that makes good business decisions, you make a bunch of money. And the government takes a bunch of that, but uh, still in all, um, you know, you make a bunch. They don't take it all. Now we're in a new world, okay? And this started, uh, we saw this coming. We saw this coming uh, with Lehman Brothers and all the rest back in 2008. You know, too big to fail and all the rest of the stuff. Well, now everybody's too big to fail, but it's not too big to fail, right? In 2008, that's when we bailed out the banks, right? They made bad decisions and we made it good for them anyway, gave them free money. It's a really stupid idea, but there it is. There you go. Um, it's uh, As I said before, it's kind of like your neighbor gambling on your credit card. And if the neighbor loses, you pay the bill. And if the neighbor wins, they keep the money. That's, <laughs> that's what's going on. And, and, and here's the thing. You got to be politically well connected for that to work. Because if you're not politically well connected, they right now, right now, if you're a, if you don't do what they want you to do, and again, this is just newspaper. I don't, I don't have any personal experience of this. Um, but if you're a gun manufacturer, or whatever, if you're the kind of person they decide they don't like, right, you can't get a loan, or and they're trying so that you don't get a loan, that they'll shut down your bank accounts, they'll lose you as a as a client, they won't loan you money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's what's going on. Now, if those people make bad decisions, if a bank that doesn't invest where the government, where the powers that be want them to invest and they make bad decisions, you think they're going to get bailed out? <laughs> of course not. <clears throat> this is what's so unfair about the whole thing. It's it's all who you know, what you know, not what you know, it's who you know. And it's just, it's terrible. And it's fallen on you. It's fallen on the middle class because you're the only one with a credit card, right? The, the rich are too... <laughs> You get the wealthy over there, the super wealthy. I'm not talking about people who made their money working. I'm not talking about doctors, right? I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the people who, like in Silicon Valley, right? Right? They say, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I said, well, great, be an entrepreneur, which means you can lose everything as well as gain everything. That's what being an entrepreneur means, all right? And you manage your risk. You don't just take crazy risks and hope us, hope that, we're going to bail you out because guess what? When you make a ton of money, you go strutting around the stage. I mean, think of all the people who've think of all the people who've had their names on the front page of Forbes. That lady with the, who's going to do all the blood tests with a drop of blood, fraud. The 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 guy with the cryptocurrency, another fraud. You know, um, who are some of the other people? I mean, I don't even know them all, and they're not personal friends of mine. But anyway. It seems like if you get your name on the, uh, you get your picture on the front cover of Forbes magazine, then the next thing you know, it turns out you're a scoundrel and and you lose everything. And guess what? The, the middle class pays for it. This is this is the SVB, Signature Bank. Okay, these crony things, this Credit Swiss. I you you would have thought that the I would have thought I did think that you know, hey, if they're Swiss, that means they're reliable. Apparently not. Now we're going to be bailing them out too. And what does bailing them out mean? It means giving them money. All right? They made a bet with money. Right? From depositors. People trusted them with their money. Banks did, businesses did. They said, "Okay. <clears throat> okay, Silicon Valley Bank, we trust you with our with our money. Please don't screw it up." And then they screwed it up. And then the people who trusted them with the money said, "Hey, I want my money back." And they said, uh, we lost it. But if we hadn't lost it, then you could have had it back with a lot of mo a lot more money, a lot of interest. Uh, but we screwed up, and now you don't get your money back. And they say, but we really want our money. Hey, hey, look, there's those people standing over there. They got money. Let's take their money away from them and give it to us. Do you see how absurd this is? Do you see how absolutely wrong, corrupt. I mean, is there anything more corrupt than stealing somebody else's money? 
to give it to... Think about how this would work, all right? All right, your kid sets up a lemonade stand. The lemonade is for crap, okay? It's terrible lemonade. Nobody wants to buy it. And your kid's like, oh, but I put all this money into my lemonade stand. And then you go next door to your neighbor and you say, hey, give my kid 10 bucks because they set up a lemonade stand and the lemonade is terrible. <laughs> your neighbor's like, why in the world would I do that? Uh, Because she's too young to fail. He's too young to fail. Whatever the hell that means. And and you're like, oh, oh, oh. well, I don't understand it, but here's my credit card. Go ahead. Because by the way, you already took away all my money. My money's all gone. Now all I got is a credit card. But go ahead, charge it. I'm sure my kids will be happy to, my grandchildren will be happy to pay. That's where we're at. And in this environment, okay, now I can imagine other environments. I can imagine there's something else going on here where people would say to me, and I would have some sympathy for the idea that, oh, I don't deserve a payback on my taxes, right? Yeah, I paid into long-term care through Medicare, Medicaid, excuse me. I paid into it, but oh, I shouldn't get any benefit from it. Okay, well, that makes no sense to me. Zero sense. Zero sense made. Don't get it. Don't begin to get it, okay? And understand that what I do all day you know, mostly what I do all day. I take naps, but <laughs> no, I don't really, but uh, involuntary. But uh, what I do all day is try to make sure that folks like you, middle-class folks, don't go broke in long-term care. How do we make sure that middle-class folks don't go broke in long-term care? Well, government has a program for that. And then the question is, how do I qualify for the program. And so often people think, oh, I don't qualify. It's like this, it's just like this ERC stuff, the uh, Employee Retention Tax Credit, the COVID taxes. You may have heard of this because they're doing it on the radio and TV and everything else. You know, if you got an email, you've probably gotten an email on it. If you, you have any association with a business, you've probably heard about this. Well, it's a legit, and, and the IRS just last week, they came out with another thing saying, oh, this is a legitimate program. It's a real program. Yes, it is. It's a real program, but there are people doing bad things with it, which is true. I've seen it, okay? But it is a real program. And if you do it correctly, as we have done thousands of times in the Medicaid arena, now thousands of times in the employee retention tax, we've had thousands of, thousands of cases, literally. Um, you know, run through uh, a firm where I'm, I'm partners in the firm. And... Um, you know, you document the heck out of it. You follow the rules. And guess what? Guess what? You know, I didn't set up the program. I didn't I didn't make it. I didn't make the rules. All I do is read the rules and say, hey, guess what? If you're a small business that's taking it on the chin <laughs> and unmentionable places, right? <laughs> Thanks to hyperinflation and recession, every other damn thing, right? Well, here's a way to keep staggering along. Here's here's some more money that the government was willing to uh, give you back or let you, yeah, let you get back. You already earned it. You paid it in. Now they're saying, well, here, we'll let you, we'll let you have some of the money that you earned. We won't take all of it this time, right? That's what's going on. That's what this ERC thing is all about. And uh, and I, and still, I have people saying, oh, it's terrible. You're taking money from the government. It's like, where the hell do you think they got the money in the first place? And by the way, we're living in an environment where people who are not entitled, right, want to change the rules. They lose, and now they change the rules so that you fund their win. But you don't want to play by the rules because you might get some benefit from it. It just, it's mind-numbing to me. So if someone can explain that to me, I'd really like to understand it. Because it seems to me that the people who pay in, the people who play by the rules, right? If you play by the rules, and that's the that's the touchstone for me. I didn't make the rules. I didn't have. I don't have any lobbyists. N nothing like that. But if you make the rules and I play by them, what's so bad about that? Especially when it is finally a bit of reward for the people who pay the taxes, who pay the bill for everybody else. 
That's the question. You've been listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. This is, of course, the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. It's how you don't go broke. Um, and, I, and I don't mean by uh, you don't go broke by, uh, you know, by uh, tripping the life fantastic and then uh, expecting other people to bail you out. You don't go broke because you do it smartly uh, the first time. You do it with a little bit of uh, common sense, a little bit of intelligence uh, and hard work because there's no substitute for that. Right? I mean, that that's the other thing. Um, you get this idea that the, the gravy train will never end. And that is not, uh, obviously, that's not the case. Well, or is it the case? Maybe it is. I mean, look at these folks out in Silicon Valley. They decided to spend their their time not keep not minding the knitting, sticking to the knitting. Now that was too boring. They wanted to do social engineering. They wanted to do, you know, show other people just how virtuous they were and how wonderful they are. And you know, well, is it? It's important to be good. It's important to be wonderful. Yeah, that that that's good, right? But was it? You know, what's it say in the Bible, right? About don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing when it comes to that kind of thing. And it's, instead, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we're a bank that, uh, oh, excuse me, we're a, we're a do-gooding society uh, that happens to have billions of dollars because uh, we're sort of a bank. Um, and by the way, if we're stupid as a bank, then we expect everyone else to chip in and give us back our money. See? I mean, it's one thing when, when you're talking about people who are working for a living, and they had a lot of payroll money at these banks, right? But who are they bailing out? They're not bailing out the people working for an hour, by the hour. They're not bailing those people out. They're bailing out the people who had millions, hundreds of millions. One of our callers, uh, Bill, called in and said, hey, you know, governor of uh, California had three wineries. How do you, how, wait a second, back that up for me. How do you have three wineries, right, in California, like wineries take acreage, don't they? And then don't you have people picking the grapes and storing the wine? I, I would imagine that winery would be a fairly expensive enterprise. I, I don't know. I've never run one. But you got bottles, right? You got those big stainless steel vats and all kinds of stuff going on with that. And now a public servant, hardy har har, the governor of California has three of them. Three of them. All right. Are you telling me there's no whiff of corruption there? How did he how did he get three wineries? Well, borrowed money. Borrowed from who? Borrowed from Silicon Valley Bank? I don't know. I have no idea. It was just a caller. But but you know, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? How do they get away with this stuff? Why do we let them get away with this stuff? And then, and this is what as I say, this is what uh uh chaps me is why is it that when you expect to get a little bit of payback for what you paid in, you're awful, you're terrible. Right? Right? Does it, does it drive you crazy? It drives me crazy. It drives me nuts. But that's but it's all about playing by the rules. You see, that's the, that's the touchstone for me. It's like I didn't make the rules. I didn't even influence the making of the rules. It told me what the rules were, and I said, Good. Let's go for it. Now, here's a question. How do you make sure that anybody who wants to play by the rules will have the tools to do so? That's a challenge. That has always been a challenge because it's not easy stuff. And the fact of the matter is, see, look, you can go online. I'm sure there are places you can go online download a bunch of papers and say, oh, now I got a trust, I got a power of attorney, I got this and that. Okay, I believe that. I'm sure that that is true, that for free, you can get a whole bunch of papers, you can print them out, you can fill in the blanks. And uh, and the reason I know this is true is because people come to my office, uh, talk to me, talk to the other attorneys uh, on a weekly basis anyway, probably a daily basis, and they bring this stuff in or or the doctor's office hands it out or something. And then you say, hey, look, this is what you've got. Let me see what you've got. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to scrap this just for no reason, but, but let me see what you got. Okay, you, you see where there's, 
nowhere in here that says the medical health, uh, the medical power of attorney deals with mental health issues. Okay, what that means is you're going to probate court if you get Alzheimer's or what have you. That's what this means. <clears throat> That's 90 plus percent of these powers of attorney that we see have that deficiency. Or you look at a financial power of attorney and say, look, this is why this doesn't work. Or you go through the other things that they've done and you say, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And, you know, you can evaluate it. Okay. This stuff that people download. Or here, here's a good question for you. When was the last time, if you have an estate plan at all, when was the last time <clears throat> you talked to the attorney who put the estate plan together? When was the last time? For the vast majority of folks we talk to, vast majority, the last time you talked to that person, that attorney, or financial planner, or whoever it was, <clears throat> was when you signed the documents. Well, well, yeah. do you really think the thing's going to work now? I mean, if the last time you did any, any, anything to your motor vehicle when you drove it off the lot was driving it off the lot, if that was it, you didn't even put gas in it, right? You didn't even do the basic things that are, and the thing's not going to work. Maybe that's a, maybe someone come up with a better analogy, but the point is that, most estate planning is done extremely poorly, very poorly. And I don't care where you, I don't care if you got out of the glass tower. Okay. They gave you a memo, which they know you're not going to read, which they know is going to result in probate for them. You know, it's going to perpetuate the probate industry. They know that. How do they, do they know it? Oh, it's not 100% of the time. No, it's only what? 50% of the time. 60%, 70%. How often do you get to fail on the job, right? And keep your job? Well, with lawyers, it's 90 plus percent when it comes to this estate planning stuff because they don't fund the trust, meaning the trust don't work, meaning your kids are going through probate, but you're safely dead. So we don't have to worry about you anymore. All we have to do is show the kids the memo that we gave you and that excuses everything. Really? You, you think I'm joking? I am. <laughs> you think I'm screwing with you. I am not screwing with you. This is what's going on. Now, how do you fix that? And the answer is, uh, the answer has always been very, per, you know, very personalized approach. That's what we've always taken. Very, very personalized approach. Um, and we tease you, coach you, force you, do it for you, all the rest of this stuff to make sure that the plan actually works. Because that's the only way, because there's this, there's this whole mythology out there that, hey, I signed the documents, I got my trial, I'm done, which isn't true at all, doesn't serve you at all. I'm going to talk about what the remedy is next. You've been listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And the question is not, how do we get your stuff to your kids when you're dead? OK, that's not the question. I know that's what everybody's question is. I understand. Oh, I want to leave a legacy. Oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, that, and that's all good. And I'm not opposed to it. Uh, in fact, I think we do a much better job of that than than most people. And we can get into that if you'd like. You know, why? How can I be so bold as to say that? Well, <laughs> well 33 years of looking what's actually going on uh, kind of gives me a little. Uh, uh, a little confidence in that area. Um, but uh, but the, the problem has been, and it is a real problem, uh, the problem has been how do you do what needs to be done when everybody thinks that it doesn't need to be done, okay? So if you think that uh, I can download a trust for free, I can do these things myself, I can, it's all do-it-yourself type stuff. Uh, or if you've gone to an attorney and the attorney says, oh, it should only cost this much. You should, you should only do a will. You should do this. You should do that. Uh, and they ignore long-term care and they ignore um, just the vicissitudes of life, just the, just the normal stuff that comes up. Um, divorce, bankruptcy, lawsuits, car accidents, student loan debt, all that is all just wiped away. And then it's like, oh, that'll never happen. Okay. Well, you know, it's, a, it's an attitude. I mean, you can you can take that position if you want to. I don't take that position. Um, and the team doesn't either. 
we can pretend that you're going to do things that we know you will not do. And a consequence of that is your estate plan will fail, as most do, 90 plus percent of these estate plans, they just fail. And people wind up going through probate when they shouldn't, they do, because they didn't follow through. And and when you talk to the attorney, when you talk to the estate planner, financial planner, whoever, um, you know, it's very easy because you don't notice it, right? If you don't change the oil in the car, when do you notice it? When the engine seizes up, that's when you notice it. Until then, well, I don't know. I didn't change it for the last three years. It worked fine. Yeah, well, no, it didn't, actually. You just didn't notice it until it didn't work anymore. And with estate planning, you don't know that it doesn't work until catastrophe, until someone's died or someone needs long-term care. And then that's when you figure out, oh, maybe I should have done, maybe I should have done something else. I had this conversation just yes, yesterday, no, day before, Friday, had this conversation Friday uh, with a client who uh, was like, well, I'm sure we did the, the full, the full plan. I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> We told you to, but you didn't. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a it was a cost saving thing. OK, and I get the cost saving thing. Look, I'm as I'm as tight with a nickel as anybody else. And we work very hard at the firm to be as efficient as possible. Let me just look at our staffing. You know, most attorneys, most law firms have two, three, four, five attorneys per support person or admin person, support personnel like that. We reverse it, okay? We've got uh, several paralegals um, per attorney. Why? Because I don't want to pay an attorney to do for you what I can have a paralegal do. Now, if I was billing by the hour, if I was billing by the hour, I got every incentive in the world to have attorneys do stuff that someone else could do. I have every incentive in the world, and that's what's happening. Uh, you know, just say it. I mean, it's it's so easy to observe. Okay, it's so easy. just look look at what's getting done. Look at how it's getting done. Okay, if you've got somebody filing and that person you know, paying them by the hour, you're paying four hundred fifty bucks an hour for filing. I don't pay four hundred fifty bucks an hour for filing. I've an admin do it. You know, and and it's not just that. I mean, it's some very high level stuff. We still have our paralegals doing. If I don't need a lawyer to do it, I don't have a lawyer to do it. Because frankly, the paralegals do, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this, but the attorney, <laughs> well, you know, attorneys, they always want to do the next, the bigger, better thing, right? They they want to, you know, demonstrate their brilliance, which is great. Love that. Okay. But there's a lot of stuff that doesn't require brilliance. There's a lot of stuff that just requires stick to as my mother would say, you know. You lack stick to Well, I need somebody with stick to And so we hire the people with to, to, to get the job done, to follow it through. And when you do it that way, <clears throat> then you get a better result at less expense. And that's why we do the fixed fee. Okay. You're not subsidizing. I don't want to set up a situation where I get rewarded or anybody gets rewarded for taking extra time. You don't want that. At the same time, you need to get the job done. So the question then becomes, and this has been my challenge for years, is how do I deliver what needs to get done and do it in such a way that it's still affordable? Right? And when you look at cost benefit, our usual fees are affordable. We've got everyone from you know 300,000 net worth to God knows how many million uh, net worth. And it's the same fee for the same work. We don't charge extra and we don't discount it because it's the same work that we're doing, okay? I don't care how much is in your account. What difference does it make to me? Just a number on a page. If you got 30,000 or 300,000, I don't, what, what, I can make mistakes if it's 30,000, but I better not if it's 300 or 3 million. I mean, I mean, what is that? Where's the logic in that? No, in fact, the less you've got, the more precious it is, the more we, we've got to do that. And so that's the new model is that's that's been the challenge. And the answer has is now um, when we're making it available is rather than one on one. What if you met 
in a group, right? What if we figure it out, and we have, all those points of contact where it we've done it one-on-one, -on -one, but we don't have to do it one-on-one, -on -one, all right? We could do it one to a group, one attorney to five, six, 10 families at the same time. What if we could deliver everything we're doing now, right? Everything we're doing now, but, but now you, you're in a room with other people. And that's what we've done. We've managed to cut the cost in half. Some, depending on what you do, maybe two thirds. Okay. And that's what, that's the new, that's the new approach. That's the new model. If we can deliver the same, and that, that's, that's the challenge that we've got right now. Right. And I think we've answered it because that was our intention. How can we deliver the same quality? We're never going to do what everybody else is doing. We are never, ever, ever going to do that. That's, I, 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 I can't believe anybody is doing that, but, but you see it. So we're never going to do that. Forget about it. All right. If you, if you really want to slap dash, throw it on the wall and, you know, don't worry about the probate that's coming next. Fine. If you want to do that, good. God bless you. Go ahead. Okay. But if you want it done correctly, in my opinion, what I would view as correctly, if you want to plan for long-term care, if you want to plan for asset protection, if you want to plan for all those things that are inherent in what I would consider to be a well-crafted as opposed to a slapdash sticking on the, you know, licking a promise sort of estate plan, well, now it's affordable. Uh, but the consequence of that is it's not the one-on-one -on -one, and we have to give that up. But there's no, there's nowhere else. There's nowhere else to go, you know. If we don't, you know, if we don't do it this way, so that's the that's the new approach. In case you were wondering what's going on, that's what's going on. Um, it's like flying to Florida with Allegiant Airlines. The seats don't, go, or any of the other low cost frontier, whoever, where the seats don't go back, and you you know you get to carry a <laughs> you get to carry a ditty bag on with you. You know that's it uh, without paying extra. But that's that. You know, but at the same time, you always get to Florida. You always accomplish the goal. And that's our that's our new thing. So you're listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. We're talking today about what is the uh, what is the new approach? I mean, how do we make sure that um because I'll tell you, it's it's not easy. It's not easy doing this stuff correctly okay it's not easy to run a bank where you don't go run into you know uncle joe to bail you out with other people's money it's not easy to do that uh it's a difficult economic environment we're in it is um but it seems to me that changing the rules in the middle of the game which is which is what's going on now uh just just the way to disaster right so, but that's what they want. There's the, this overwhelming sense of entitlement uh, to your money that they're willing to do this and sh shamelessly. I mean, like, like entitledly. So if you're the governor of California, you have three wineries, right? Three vineyards, I guess, or interest in them. I don't know uh, exactly how that all works. But anyway, he's got, uh, and you put your money in this bank and the bank goes bust right, with your money in it, it seems to me that that was the risk that you took in working with this bank. And so now, you know, oh, they were very virtuous. They certainly signaled how virtuous they were. You know, they're very good about that. Not so good at managing the money. Well, you made a choice. Governor, why shouldn't you have to live by your choice? Well, because you got, I mean, you're Nancy Pelosi's son-in-law, I think. Isn't that isn't there some relation there? I don't know. Seems to me there is. But anyway, so you're connected, right? Are we in a nation now where the connected people don't have to bear the risks of their activity, but they get the rewards? Is that how this is supposed to work? Is, is, does that make it fair? And now here's the other thing, of course. And then people say, well, just because they do it doesn't mean I can do it. I'm like, absolutely right. You know, <laughs> nobody cares about you. That's right. So I'm not talking about changing the rules in the middle of the game or changing the score after the game's been played. And now we know what the now we know what, who the winners and losers are. And you're like, 
well, I don't want to be a loser here. I spent the night at the casino. I lost all this money. I want a do-over, right? But that's what they're doing. I, I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying, look, let me play, all right? You know, you, you made the rules. I get it. You made the rules. I'm fine with that. So now tell me what the rules are, and I'll play by the rules. That's all we're doing. That, but it, but we are doing it. But we are doing it, and we're digging in enough, right? We're digging in enough to find out what is available, what isn't available, and how can we do it. And you see that in so much of what we do, right? When it comes to, obviously, the long term care for me has always been since I first figured it out, and it took me a couple of years to do it. Uh, figure out what the heck was going on with it. That has been a touchstone for me because that's how people like you who would never go broke, never, ever happen uh, on your own, but now you've got a long-term care situation. And unlike Social Security, unlike Medicare, right? when you need long-term care, they make you go broke. They don't do that for Social Security. They don't do that for Medicare. Uh, but for long-term care, oh yeah, now you got to be broke. Now you got to be busted. Well, how did that get to be fair? And guess what? You don't actually have to. Given the way the rules are given the way the rules are set up, you don't have to go broke. There's stuff you can do in the moment, but the easiest, the most effective thing is to pre-plan. So we've been pre-planning for quite a while, you know, 30 years now, planning for it. Okay. And if you didn't pre-plan because you believed what the other guys are saying, sorry for that. All right, but if you believed it, <laughs> shame on you. Uh, but if you believed it, you know, we can still, there's, there's still good things we could do. We can fix a lot of it. Can't fix it at all. And it's expensive. Well, it's, it's not easy to do, but we can. Okay. So how do we bring that to more folks? How do we make it more accessible? Well, you know, I understand that I'm operating in an environment where people aren't doing what needs to be done. They're cutting corners. They're doing things poorly, right? They're not considering. And I'm. T I, uh, this is this is my view on the whole estate planning industry, the the probate industry, right? I mean, no one's surprised by this, right? I've been saying this for God knows as long as I've been on the radio. Well, before that, I mean, I've been saying this right along, uh, because it. This is what I'm observing. Now, the problem is, in order to do it correctly. Right? It takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of people. What if there was a way that we could deliver the results without as much expense? It's still going to cost, yeah. But what if we could do it for half price? And I, I was always, I'll tell you, my my, well, I can't do it. I, I got here's here's what has to be done. How can I do this? You know, and charge less for it. I'm not going to do less. That's not going to happen. And I'm as automated, I'm as efficient in terms of staffing, everything else as I possibly can be. So how do we do it? And I've been stuck on that until a friend of mine said, hey, wait a second. What if we did it? Uh, what if we did it in a group? Not everything, because there's stuff that's just personal. That's got to be one-on-one. -on -one. But what if we took everything we could do in a group and did it in a group? Well, now we can, and, and we do a monthly thing. There's a, you know, and pay it as long as you want to get additional services, right? Um, but the the point is, the key is, the key is that for half to one third as much, really, I mean, half to a third, just say half, for half of what it would take to do it traditionally when we do it in a group setting, now we can keep our head above water, pay everybody and deliver the same results. Now, it, won't, it won't be the same experience because right now it's very much a one-on-one. -on -one, it's very much a, you know, focused on you. But, but, you know, there's lots of people fly to Florida, you know, with the seats that don't go back and you have to bring your own peanuts on the airplane and all that. Okay. You still get to Florida 100% of the time. The safety record of the so-called low-cost airlines is the same as the safety record of the expensive ones. What's different? Well, they pack more people on the airplane. 
You're going with more people at the same time. Okay, but wait a second. Were you here for the one-hour trip, the three-hour trip, two-hour trip, whatever it was, right? Are you here for that? Is that what we're doing? Or are you trying to accomplish the result? Are you trying to get to Florida? Because if you're trying to get to Florida <laughs> or Vegas or wherever else you're going, right? right? Isn't that the point? Well, if that is the point, then here's how we're going to accomplish it. We've already uh, we've already been doing this for a couple of months, and the results have been very, very encouraging. Uh, the feedback has been very positive. And so if you haven't been to a workshop in quite a while, um, then I would encourage you to come to one and see what the uh, see what the new thing is all about. The message is the same. The results are the same. It's the methodology that's different, and that's how we can lower the cost to you. Right? So if you had come in before and it's like, oh, it's too expensive. Maybe not anymore. Give it a try. What could it hurt? You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney.